Hello and welcome. Today I want to share with you my top 10 concerns when traveling with a pocket knife, especially overseas. Now, I've been teaching uh, self-defense for quite some time now with the focus on the knife, or more so defense against the knife. And I've picked up quite a good amount of information from uh, doing all the traveling, especially traveling overseas to teach. And since I've learned a lot of lessons, unfortunately some of them the hard way, I figure I'd share this information with you today. And unfortunately, I've seen many people get into trouble for things that I see now as obvious, but back in the day, maybe I didn't even see them. So my hopes with this information is to convey it over to you and just give you more of a thought process to be a bit more prepared when you are traveling. Now, since we are talking about traveling, concern number one, what are the rules, the laws, the regulation concerning the pocket knife or any knife in the destination that I'm traveling to? This is where people get in trouble. We are in the United States and from state to state, sometimes from county to county, the rules change with what's legal in one place might not be legal in the other. And then you end up getting jammed up, uh, getting fines, getting your knife confiscated or worse. Concern number two, when I'm carrying my pocket knife, am I able to conceal it with the wardrobe that I plan on wearing? Let's say you're in a very hot, hot climate. You might not even have your t-shirt on. You might have a small pair of shorts. That right there is going to uh, dictate if you're able to conceal what you're carrying or not. Once again, I'm going more into an extreme uh, picture to put in your head. But in all actuality, uh, the last thing you want to do is really expose anything that you're carrying. Uh, especially overseas where things that we already discussed might be a little bit iffy. So you don't need to draw that much more attention to you. Okay, so before I move on to concern number three, you've noticed that so far I am pulling out a few of the knives that I use when I do travel, uh, depending once again on the location, and they're all folders. Uh, once again, for me, easier to conceal, easier to travel with, and from what I've seen law-wise, uh, pocket knives are much more accept uh, acceptable around the world. Concern number three, have I practiced enough with my knife? Uh, can I get to this knife easily and this specific knife, not just the knife that you might use as a trainer, uh, let's say while you're practicing, but that specific knife, because every knife has its own little nuances and you want to be super familiar with that knife. So make sure that if you are planning this for a, or, or plan on carrying your pocket knife for a self-defense application, be super familiar with that pocket knife before you choose to carry it. And it might end up becoming a liability for you rather than an asset. Concern number four, is my pocket knife razor sharp? Once again, a dull knife is a liability. A dull knife is dangerous. So if you do have a dull knife and that's what you plan on carrying while you're going overseas or pretty much anywhere, I would definitely leave that knife at home. Probably be a better choice for you. Now, when it comes to razor sharp knives, if you've been following me for a while, you know that the Wicked Edge systems, to me, are second to none in my preferred method of getting my knives, any knives, but since we're specifically talking about pocket knives, getting my pocket knives razor sharp. Concern number five, will I be using my pocket knife as an eating utensil, uh, silverware? Okay, uh, there's many places that I've traveled to where cleanliness really wasn't on the top of their list uh, at some of these restaurants and looking at the silverware and what was, what was presented to me wasn't really what I wanted to utilize. So, uh, you know, that was definitely a mental note that I made years ago to, once again, have a knife and even certain pocket knives, once again, even come with a little fork. But those are the type of things that I'm thinking about. And remember, these concerns uh, are what's going to dictate which specific knife I plan on bringing to this uh, trip as I'm traveling overseas. Concern number six, will I need to adjust this gear while I'm on this trip? Uh, what do I mean by that? I do go on a lot of trips where I'm hiking and rucking and even leading hikes or having to hike to get to certain areas where that's where the training's going to occur. Now, while I'm on these hikes, a lot of times, as you know, your gear becomes faulty and there's a pocket knife in a pinch goes a long way in helping you adjust straps, uh, cutting shoelaces, uh, cutting rope, uh, cutting f uh, straps on your pack to be able to tie them and cinch them down if they ended up getting out of the grommet, things of that nature. Concern number seven, will my pocket knife look a little too tactical to bring to the area that I plan on traveling to? Uh, once again, depending on the area. 
if I were to bring a folder such as this zero tolerance that looks scary and it's beefy and it makes a lot of noise and has a uh, thumb assist, there's a good chance in certain areas that I go that I'm not going to be able to leave with that knife if law enforcement questions me and takes a look at it. And there are other areas where it's no big deal at all. So once again, knowing which one to carry, okay, where I might want to bring around this little one that'll be perfect because it addressed all the concerns for this uh, area that I'm traveling to. Concern number eight, kind of going uh, along the same lines here as we just talked about with number seven, will I be hiking and walking a lot where first aid might be a concern? from splinters and especially blisters. Once again, keeping that in mind, that has a big impact once again on which blade I choose to carry. For an application like that, uh, once again, any blade that's nice and sharp should be able to uh, come in handy and help you in that first aid situation. But of course, there are plethora of knife choices out there and everyone does a specific job a little bit better than other ones. Concern number nine, touching surfaces with your bare hands, especially since we had just gone through this uh, pandemic. Everybody's a little worried. Uh, there's a tons of gadgets out there for utilizing the subway and ordering your tickets and pressing the touch screen to your ATM uh, money machine. Same thing. There's little gadgets so that you don't have to touch with your fingers and get that bacteria on you. So once again, if that is a concern, especially traveling overseas, especially certain shady areas, even just having your pocket knife, you don't need any of these other gadgets. You could pretty much use anything. But since I do have my pocket knife on me, obviously I'm not going to have the blade exposed and you can just go ahead and tap whatever the heck you need. Concern number 10, survival skills. Now, am I in an area where, let's say I'm traveling in Paris and I'm with my wife and most likely I probably won't need too many survival skills. Right? <laughs> Knock on wood, right? But in all actuality, I'd be less likely to most likely be in a survival situation in Paris than I would, let's say, hiking through uh, uh, the Amazon in Brazil. So keeping that in mind, that's going to dictate also which pocket knife do I plan on carrying. Once again, these are... 10 of my main concerns when I do travel and think about, okay, which one of the folders do I want to bring with me? But of course, there are many, many, many other options out there. I'm just sharing with mine to get you thinking. And like I said in the beginning, there might be one or two ideas that you're like, you know what, I didn't even think about that. Good idea, let me address that when I choose to, once again, carry a folder while traveling overseas, especially in areas that you're not very familiar with. So bottom line, if you plan on traveling with a pocket knife, be sure to at least think about these concerns that I shared with you today. It could keep you out of a lot of trouble. And once again, most of the time when we are traveling overseas, we're there for a mission. And most of the time it is to have a good time and enjoy. Well, getting in trouble, uh, getting your knife confiscated, getting a fine, all of those issues definitely do not lead to an enjoyable vacation. 